How's going guys, welcome to the channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto becomes the predator and got harem with Femyojita. Part 2. If you wants to see awesome fanfiction like this, don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get into the video. Zabuza's hideout. Beto and his group of thugs have arrived at Zabuza's hideout. And what do I owe the pleasure of you coming here Gato? Says Zabuza with a grunt with a black haired girl tends to his wounds. There's a problem Zabuza. My men have mysteriously gone missing. My men claim it wasn't those Konoha shinobi you encountered. But something that is I don't know beast like. I need you to make me believe if you can kill whatever it is that has killed my men. Gato asks Zabuza who looks straight into his eyes and frowned. Depends but it's going to cost you extra since you want me to go after the bridge builder. Zabuza says with Gato glaring. Don't worry about the payment. Just kill whatever that has killed my men. Once you kill it and the bridge builder you'll get your money. Gato says with a groan and with that he left leaving the swordsman alone. Zabuza sama. Dot what is it that Gato needs you to kill? Haku asked. I don't know Haku. But whatever it is. We're going to find out. Says Zabuza as he laid down with her tending to his wounds. I may have to go look for some herbs soon Zabuza sama. She would say looking at him. Go on ahead Haku. So that I could go and accomplish our job and kill whatever got Gato spooked. Zabuza says with a sigh as she nodded. Elsewhere. Five of Gato's scouts are in the forest west from the village, as they have been told to find out what has killed Gato's men and spies. They reach to another outpost that looked like it was raided and attacked. The five men gulped. Feeling very terrified and unease about going inside to see if anyone was alive. Dot. All five men suddenly armed themselves with weapons they brought which could be swords or knives. They all went inside. The lead scout held a torch since the outpost seemed dark, meaning there was no lighter power. They saw lots of destruction inside the outpost. Blood everywhere, limbs, arms and legs laying around. It made all five of them green as they moved forward. Neither of them noticed an invisible figure hiding in the darkness with its eyes glowed bright red. Okay you two split up and search for any survivors. Dot you two stay with me. Says the lead scout as they began to split apart scared out of their minds. Two scouts went separate locations. Unaware of the invisible figure following them. One scout was holding his torch and a spiked bat. Dot. He suddenly heard a clicking sound which made his blood freeze. He turned around and before he could do another the invisible figure swinged its sword beheading him. The next figure frantically looked to his right he could have sworn he heard something. Hey. Who's there? He yelled looking around frantically as he was shaking. And before he knew it, he was suddenly grabbed and taken in the darkness, dropping his torch and tried to scream, but was muffled, then was silenced after being stabbed in the back five times, and then dropped dead. What's going on sir what do you think is doing this? Ask a scout. I don't know admitted the lead scout as they kept looking around for signs of life, only to find none or no bodies just blood. Dot and limbs. Dot. Suddenly a drop of blood fell on the lead scout who blinked and looked the drop of blood that fell on him. He then looked up and then widened his eyes as did the other two scouts besides him. And what they saw. Was skinned headless bodies. Dot eight bodies hanged up as the three suddenly pissed their pants. My Kami. Dot what the hell did this shouted another scout very terrified. Before the lead scout could answer him they heard growling as they turned to the source of it. The third scout suddenly had his head blown off by a blue blast. No. Screamed the lead scout as he and other scouts started running for their lives. The second scout suddenly tripped over a stool as his leader kept running leaving him to his fate. He heard walking as the invisible figure had out its blades and suddenly went to him and stabbed him to death as he screamed. The lead scout who heard the scream from his fellow subordinate. He knew he died as he kept running fearing for his life. He ran to the door and closed it shut. He ran to the bushes scared and started hiding. Oh my Kami. Dot what the heck was that he yelled really scared as he felt his blood pressure run up and his heart pumping from him running in fear. As he hid in the bushes he looked at the outpost door to see if the attacker was going to come out. Dot. He waited for 40 seconds and nothing came out. He breathed a sigh of relief and stood up, he needed to go inform Gato now. Suddenly something wrapped around his neck and yanked him further into the bushes as he screamed while at the same time choking as he clutched the thing round his neck, in which was a whip. As he was pulled. He came face to face with an invisible figure that uncloaked itself. His eyes wide as he saw the figure reveal itself. It was Artemis. She snarled looking down at the pathetic human. She did have blood on her from killing his partners. She tightened her grip on her whip and yanked him away still choking him until he passed out. Later on. The lead scout suddenly gained consciousness as he looked around his surroundings. He tried to get up only to widen his eyes and looked at his hands and legs are tied. He suddenly heard a growl and from the right he saw Artemis who held her whip. He flinched and tried to scream only that he couldn't as he noticed his mouth is gagged. 
Naruto appeared uncloaked. Here is another one. Naruto. Artemis says as the scout seemed shocked that whatever she is it could speak. Good work Artemis. Now let's make our friend talk. Naruto says walking towards the lead scout who looked scared as he removed the gag from his mouth. Now you are going to tell me who is this Abusa. I hear he works for Gato. Naruto questioned as the lead scout winced and then he noticed Naruto brought out his wrist blades and pointed them to his neck. I'm sorry did I break your concentration. Please do tell me who Zabuza is or do I have to slit your throat. Or can skin you alive. Naruto says with intimidation that it scared the lead scout as Artemis suddenly liked the sound of Naruto being threatening, which seemed to arouse her in some form. He's a shinobi. A missing nin Gato sama hired him to kill the bridge builder named Tizuna. The scout replied not wanting to die. He wanted to live. Is that all? Naruto says in a cold voice. He's a swordsman. A skilled one. That's all I know. Please don't kill me. The scout pleaded. Are you sure that's all you know? Naruto asks as the scout nodded frantically. That's all I know. Honest. Please let me go. He begged as Naruto stared at him for a few moments with Artemis besides him. Artemis let him go. He says surprising her. Naruto. She says confused on why he's letting the scum go. You are going to relay a message to Gato and Zabuza. Tell him the Uzumaki Shredder will come for them. Naruto says with a man nodding as he cut him loose from his bindings as the man started running. Once he tells Gato his message along with Zabuza, he's going to quit working for Gato and find another job. Are you sure that was wise? She asked frowning behind her mask. I'm sure, besides they already fear us. I want to see what this Zabuza is made of. Naruto says as he turned towards her. She nodded understanding and what he was doing. Let's go weed out the rest of the thugs. He says as they both cloaked and left. With Gato. Three hours later one of his scouts had returned only to look haggard and very terrified as he babbled out what Yuzumaki Shredder had told him. Which made the small businessman scowl and glare. The rest of the thugs who were present felt terrified as the scout told them all of what he had witnessed which made them feel fear nervous. They were demons. I'm telling you. Especially the female one. As he gave a description on what Artemis looked like she was taller than the male one he saw. At least 8 feet or 9 feet. And? You guys claim that the female Yajda are taller than the male ones, so Artemis is 9 feet tall. Be quiet. Just go and tell Zabuza exactly what he's up against. Hissed Gato to the lead scout who nodded. Though on the inside Gato did feel slightly afraid of what his scout had told him. Just what in Kami's name made Yuzumaki Shredder and this female masked being. Two days later. Benko, Hana Inuzuka and Yugao Yuzaki along with her squad of Anbu arrived and waved to see what Kakashi is dealing with. So what's this in needing help Kakashi? Normally this doesn't sound like you. Anko says with him sighing. Follow me and I'll show you why. Dotty says with them following, but Yugao told her men to stay put and watch the area, as Hana told her three dogs to also stay put. As they got the area Kakashi showed them the corpses that was still in trees as the three women suddenly turned green. Hana suddenly vomited as she smelled the smell of death. Oh my Kami Anko say with wide eyes. Yeah. I'm sure you all heard of the rumors Kakashi says as they nodded. Yeah so this mysterious killer is in wave. Yugao would say. Yeah. Dot and I believe this Yuzumaki Shredder is the mysterious killer, but he's not alone Kakashi says with the three turning to him. What makes you say that? Asks Hana. From what Tizuna's daughter told us is that Yuzumaki Shredder isn't alone and that there are five others with him. Kakashi says. This is crazy no one has never seen this mysterious killer. Dot yet some villager saw him or it? Anko asks. I know. Dot just makes me wonder. Dot is there like a clan. Dot since you said it six of them. Yugao would ask. Beats me Kakashi says with a shrug. How are we going to capture it? Hana cuts in with everyone now thinking of a plan on how to capture this mysterious killer. That's a good question how can we capture it? It's like a ghost. That doesn't want to be seen or want to be seen. Dot Kakashi says stroking his chin. Think we need to place traps around Tazuna's house and we take turns in patrolling to see where it is. Suggests Yugao. Good idea. Plus my dogs could help. Hana added. Yeah, let's try that. Anko would say with others agreeing. But the other five. What are we going to do about them? Should they realize we caught one of their own? Yugao says with them going silent. Yeah if one mysterious killer was enough the other five could be much worse. Dot Anko says now realizing this. We will think this plan to capture them through. Kakashi suggested with the other two nodding as they turned to Hana who looked straight ahead and was tense as she was silent during this. What is it? Kakashi asked Hana, but she didn't answer. Hana. Anko walked close to her as did Kakashi with Yuga looking around. Hana. What the hell is wrong with you? Whispered Kakashi who grabbed her getting her attention as she turned from them but looked straight ahead into the trees. 
Dot as she felt tense and spooked. Dot. There's something in those trees Hana says quietly with everyone going tense. From a far distance. Cloaked was Naruto as he had recorded their conversation and watched them. Do you think it's the mysterious killer? Anko asks pulling out a kunai quietly. Feeling her blood turn cold as was everyone else. Dot knowing the killer could he watching them. I dot can't tell Hana says as she can't see what was far off into those trees, but caught the scent and knew it was there. Do you think we can make it if we run Anko says. No we can't. Dot Kakashi says. Why? Yugao asked. Because we're being hunted, but it's alright let's just leave here real slow says Kakashi. Like hell it is. Yugao hissed holding her sword. Let's go now. Kakashi says as they all started running like hell heading back to Tazuna's house. Tazuna's house. They made it relieved that the mysterious killer didn't pursue them. At least that was what they thought. Cause Naruto followed them back here. They caught their breath and sighed. I'm scared. Anko says. Bullshit Anko. You're rarely scared of anything. Hell you're not even afraid of Ibiki. Yugao said looking at her. I don't blame her for being scared. Dot cause I am we all are Hana says looking at the trees. I remember on the night of the QP attack. Dot a few of our clan members were searching for something, and they found bodies hanged in trees with no heads or spinal cords, they couldn't identify who it was, but they smelled three scents they couldn't describe. Dot Hana says with edge in her voice. There is something out there. Dot that's in those trees waiting for us and from what I smelled while we were at that location was no man. Even my clan members who were there where they found the bodies that night said the exact same thing. Dot whatever they smelled was no man but something else. Dot Hana adds. And the Hokage wants us to capture whatever the tuck we are dealing with. He must have gone senile. Anko hissed. Anko just calm down. Kakashi says seeing her glare at him. Calm down. How the tuck can I calm down? When there's something we've never seen before that's scaring us to death. If we live through this I'm going to kick the Sande Ami in the nuts. Anko shouted. Hold on now. You not thinking we all are going to die are we? Yugao cuts in looking at Anko. I sure as hell hope to Kami we don't. Because I'm not dying until I kill the bastard that ruined my life. Anko hissed walking off to go eat some dango to calm herself. I'm going to have my men keep watch on everything we all need to keep our eyes open. Dot Yugao says walking off to go inform her squad. The Kashi left to go check on his team. Hana remained as she looked into the trees one last time. Naruto well cloaked was also looking at her. Hana decided to go in the house to go sit down and pray to Kami that she lives in this mission. Naruto decided it was time to go. With Haku. Now alone in the forest gathering herbs so Zabuza can be in good condition in about two more days he'll be healed. As she picked up more herbs and put them in a basket. She heard the bushes rustle as she turned around and looked at the bushes only to see nothing. She didn't see anything. With a sigh of relief she went back to picking. Unbeknownst to her was in the trees. Cloaked and watching her was Naruto. Who observed her. He did admit she did look attractive. Man. I swear if I owned Naruto. I would have made Haku a girl. Seriously. He looked way too feminine. As she finished picking up herbs she got up heading back to the cabin of where her and Zabuza stayed at. With Naruto following her. Their location wasn't very far. The walk to the cabin was only 10 minutes away. As she got to the cabin but stopped looking both ways to make sure no one was following her or even watching her. She wasn't exactly aware that she was followed. Seeing the coast was clear she went inside. Naruto jumped off the branch he was perched on. Still cloaked as he went to the window of the cabin watching Haku treat Zabuza's wounds. He gave a good look at Zabuza. Dot as he glanced at the man's large sword. So this is the one he is destined to fight. Naruto could tell Zabuza was definitely warrior material and could earn his respect. As he looked at Zabuza's skull with his sensors knowing his skull would probably make an excellent trophy. Now knowing what his destined combatant looks like he is looking forward to fighting the man head on. As Naruto walked away and left before the two could notice he was there. Azuna's house. For the past few hours. Team 7, Anko, Hana, Yugao and her squad all had their eyes open too nervous and terrified of the mysterious killer or Yuzumaki Shredder waltzing around them. Each of them took turns. Patrolling around the house and perimeter yet no sign of everything. They even had to pay attention to the trees. It was then Sakura who noticed the tension around the Jonans decided to ask what was wrong. The Kashi sensei. What's wrong? Why is everyone so tense? She asked wondering what got everyone so spooked. With her sensei raising his head slightly. Even Sasuke and Sai raised their heads, both of them didn't understand why the Jonans were tense, as if they were afraid of something much worse than Zabuza. Sakura in case you haven't noticed. We are dealing with a mysterious killer. Her sensei replied making his teammates raise brows looking in confusion, still not understanding why so much fear for whatever it is they are about to face. What killer? 
Sakura asks now worried. And why is he so mysterious? Sasuke asked this time. Because no one has never seen him or it before. There are lots of rumors of the mysterious killer going around in villages killing shinobi mysteriously. By taking their heads off or in this case their whole spinal cord. And hang their headless skin bodies up in the trees. No shinobi has ever saw the killer or lived to tell the tale of seeing it in person. Yet Tazuna's daughter saw it. And gave us a brief description of what it looks like. Dot Kakashi had explained with the others turning green feeling a bit disgusted and fearful of encountering this dangerous killer. And he's in wave. Is that why everyone is scared? Sakura then asks with her sensei nodding. Yes. But he's not alone and wherever he is. Dot he's out there somewhere in the forests. Dot watching us. Kakashi says with Sakura now looking scared. So he's some kind of coward. Afraid to show himself to us. Scoffed Sasuke. I wouldn't say he's a coward. Dot but with the way he's killing his victims and always disappears unseen, I'd like to say he thinks like a hunter. A hunter that likes to play with its prey. Hana cut in having heard the conversation. Do you think he's going to hunt us? Kakashi sensei. She asked now worried for her life. Scared that the killer just may kill her or kill her beloved Sasuke kun. I hope not hopefully we can get out of this together and survive. Kakashi answered with a deep sigh. That was at least what Kakashi had believed in and hoped for. As a veteran shinobi even he felt scared of encountering this mysterious killer, as he recalled on the many stories of the mysterious killer that has never been seen before. He heard fellow chunins and jonins tell all sorts of rumors about the killer whenever they go on missions with Kashina. He too went on some missions with Kashina himself and told her about the bodies he found on their mission to Iowa outpost. Dot she didn't seem phased about it or worried hell she wasn't even concerned. It was like she was okay with what happened. He didn't want to make any conclusions, but at some point he thought Kashina was hiding something and knew who was the mysterious killer. Or perhaps maybe she was the killer. But that wasn't it. Dot because on the night of the QB attack she died, he had a strong feeling Kashina was somehow connected to the mysterious killer. But he didn't want to speak it to his sensei Minato he kept it for himself. Kakashi it's your turn to patrol. Says Anko who came in. Alright. He gets up to go patrol. This was going to be a long day and night two more days, knowing Zabuza will be healed by then and will probably come for Tizuna. Two days later. As two days have passed. Wave and its village was suddenly concealed in mist, thanks to Zabuza. Bakashi, Anko and Yugao are on the bridge fighting him. With Hana as support along with Yugao's Anbu. Sasuke and Sai are currently fighting Haku. While this was going on Sakura was currently at Tizuna's house guarding Tsunami and her son. Beto hired more thugs after losing his previous ones and has sent a small army of thugs into the village to attack the people of Wave while keeping a main force of thugs with him so that he could betray Zabuza when the time was right. In the trees were Cloak Naruto, Artemis, Falcon, Onslaught, Naira and Sabertooth. Spread out. Save the villagers. Also don't kill any of the leaf shinobi. I'm heading for the bridge. Naruto commanded as all five of them were dispatched all cloaked. Before Naruto could head his way to the bridge he heard a scream. And that sounded like Tsunami's scream. He instantly made a beeline to her house. Tazuna's house. Thugs had raided Tazuna's house. Six of them. One thug had Sakura and a hold with a knife towards her throat, while another had Inari, while the others all had Tsunami. We got you now. Wait until Gato-sama has you as his slave. Says the lead thug with Inari glaring. Let my mother go. Let her go this instant. He shouted with some of them glaring at him as the lead thug chucked. Looky here boys. Another little punk who thinks he can intimidate us. Do you know who we are boy? We work for Gato and there's nothing you can do to stop us. Shouted the lead thug with his men laughing as Inari glared harder. You'll be sorry when he gets here. Inari shouted. Oh. And who's going to stop us? Hmm. Who's going to stop us boy? No one is going to save you or your mother. You both will belong to Gato-sama. The thug put on an arrogant smile. It was then a blue blast suddenly hit the thug blowing a hole in his stomach. Which made everyone shocked as Inari and Tsunami smiled in relief. Yuzumaki Shredder is here. Sakura looked horrified at the sight before her, and coming in was an invisible figure with its claws out, and suddenly the thugs screamed when Yuzumaki Shredder slaughtered them like cattle as blood sprayed on the walls and floor. The lead thug dropped Tsunami in fright and was suddenly cut in the throat. As the blood flew to Sakura's face. Uncloaked. Was Yuzumaki Shredder. Shredder. Inari cheered with happiness in seeing his hero. Tsunami also blushed happy that her savior has saved her once again. Sakura looked terrified at Yuzumaki Shredder's appearance. You're welcome. Yuzumaki Shredder says as he walked out the door and went to the bridge to meet with Zabuza as he cloaked. Tsunami and Inari went out to see their hero run off to the bridge, even though they couldn't see him, but they could tell he was heading to save Tazuna. 
Suddenly throughout the village they heard multiple screams and growls. All of Gato's thugs that was sent into the village to attack were being slaughtered by Naruto's teammates. On the bridge. So we meet again Kakashi. And you've brought help with you? Zabuza chimes seeing Kakashi held a kunai. Seeing Anko, Yugao and Hana behind the Cyclops Jonin. With the Anbu waiting for orders from their captain Yugao. Yes. And this time we are going to stop you. Kakashi says as they began to clash. As the two exchange blows. Suddenly Kakashi lunged forward slashing his kunai at Zabuza, who blocked the attack with his sword. Zabuza put pressure on their deadlock and then kicked Kakashi away, and just as he was going to charge forward and end Kakashi's life. Hana suddenly smelled that scent as her eyes were wide dot. He's here. Hana says. Plang. What the hell? Zabuza questioned in confusion seeing a katana block his attack. This made others widen their eyes at seeing the invisible figure. Uncloaked was Yuzumaki Shredder who held his katana looking at Zabuza. Who are you? Zabuza asked this new stranger. I am Yuzumaki Shredder. You must be Zabuza. Yuzumaki Shredder introduced with others looking shocked that Shredder has been revealed and that he saved Kakashi. Ah so you're the guy that is Gato scared. Zabuza backed off. You look worthy to make a great trophy. How about a duel? Blade by blade. Shredder asks with Zabuza grinning behind his bandages. So fight to the death eh? I accept your challenge. Zabuza says as he hefted up his sword with Shredder raising his katana. The onlookers who watched could only look in fear and shock that this is Yuzumaki Shredder. As they watched in silence of the two fighting. Both charged at another raising their swords clashing making clanging sounds. Both exchanged blows as Yuzumaki Shredder blocked both Zabuza's sword strikes. You're good. What are you? Zabuza asked pointing his sword at Yuzumaki Shredder. I am a fellow warrior like you. But I prefer to be called a hunter. Shredder would say as they both charged and exchanged blows with their blades. Who is he? Is he the one my daughter was talking about? Tazuna says as he and the Kanoha Jonans watch the fight between Zabuza and Shredder in awe. As the sounds of swords clanging and clashing filled the area they were in. Along with hearing the grunts and battle cries. The two fighters circled around each other facing each other. Both gripped the hilts of their swords. Zabuza was sweating as he looked excited in having a good sword fight. It's been a long time since he last has a decent sword fight. He was determined to beat this Yuzumaki Shredder. Yuzumaki Shredder waited for his opponent to make his move. Watching him carefully raising his katana slightly. And like he predicted. Zabuza charged again with a forward slash with Shredder evading it and then swinged his sword to his right, but Zabuza blocked it and pushed Shredder back as he hefted his heavy sword and spun it around and then swinged it aiming for Shredder's waist, but Shredder countered it by intervening with his sword and used his weight and strength to push back Zabuza's blow. Both fighters backed away slightly. Looking at one another. As they prepared to make their next moves. Hopefully going to end this fight in one attack. Shredder made the first charge as he growled in human like as if he was a demon which terrified the onlookers and felt intimidated. Zabuza also charged both swing their swords running past each other. For one minute and thirty seconds they stood in silence. Yuzumaki Shredder stood still. Though he was bleeding. Green blood seeped from his shoulder. Along with receiving a slash mark on his mask. Zabuza. He suddenly stiffened. A large gash was on his stomach and upwards his torso. Blood was leaking from his wound as blood also leaked from his mouth. Zabuza fell on both knees dropping his sword. While Shredder still stood still. Those who watched couldn't believe it. Yuzumaki Shredder won and bested Zabuza. Shredder turned towards his opponent who was on his knees. Zabuza turned his head slightly at his opponent and fell flat on his back. Well that was the best sword fight I'd ever have he at least I died with honor as a swordsman Zabuza says, with Shredder looking down at him. He was a very worthy opponent. Zabuza. You have earned my respect. Other hunters would have enjoyed fighting you or having you among us. Shredder says with Zabuza acknowledging that. Then a dying swordsman make one last wish. Dot Zabuza says looking at Shredder who nodded. What is it? Shredder replied going to respect his opponent's last wish. Could you take in Haku? Dot she's my companion no. Dot more like my daughter please take her in for me and let her know that I wanted it this way and that she now must live a better life in your hands now. Dot and for you defeating me take this Zabuza says with his last breath reaching for his sword and put it in Shredder's hands. As life finally left him. Your wish will be honored. Shredder says bowing. Zabuza sama. No. Haku screamed as she ran to her adoptive father clutching his dead body. I am sorry. Haku was it. Dot your father was a very worthy opponent. He fought a warrior's death he wanted it this way. Shredder would say with her looking up at him with tears. What will I do now she says still hugging his dead body. He wants me to look after you. And I'm going to honor his dying wish. Would you come with me? 
Haku. Shredder says putting his hand out to her. As she looked at him and his hand. Looking down at her dead adoptive father having to accept and come to terms with him dying. She took his hand. Well isn't this touching. Zabuza lost. HMPH no matter I wasn't going to pay him anyway. Says Gato who now made himself known with large groups of men standing behind him. Beto. His Taku looking at the short man. Nice seeing you too you little bitch. You are going to pay for breaking my arm right after I turn you into a sex slave. Gato says smugly. That won't happen Gato. For reigning terror in Wave Village you will die. Shredder says now shooting his harpoon at Gato and yanked the man to him who screamed it was then before any of this thugs could try to save him, Shredder brought out his plasma rod whip. As the rod whip which was made from his xenomorph tail, suddenly glowed light blow coated in pure plasma. And with one single lash from the whip across Gato. Bisected him in half. This made the thugs look terrified and scared feeling really frightened and intimidated by Yuzumaki Shredder, who killed their boss. As he turned towards the men growled in a demonic voice. Leave and never come back. Shredder hissed with the many thugs now shitting themselves, instantly started dropping their weapons and ran in fear not wanting to throw their lives away. After that the villagers of Wave appeared who saw the whole thing started cheering for Yuzumaki Shredder, it was then Tsunami stepped forward hugging her dad while also looking at Shredder. I thank you for saving our village and saving me and my son's life. I would like to see the face of my hero. Tsunami says with every villager in Wave wanted to see the same thing wanting to see what their hero looked like. The Kanoha group also wanted to see his identity. If that is what you wish. Then so be it. Shredder says pulling the cords from his mask and helmet. Everyone was watching in silence and awe. Seeing Yuzumaki Shredder put both his hands on his mask removing it off his face slightly. Eyes were wide as gasps were heard. Once they saw a view of his face. As soon as he unmasked himself. Many eyes were wide at his appearance. Once they got a good look at his facial appearance. Red dreadlocks, red eyes with slit pupils, whisker marks of that of a fox or cat that were darker and feral looking, the his skin reptilian with light reddish color. To say he looked very intimidating and fearless. They couldn't believe it. Tsunami blushed at his appearance. Which didn't seem to bother her or frighten her in some way. Even Anko, Yugao and Hana blushed. This is the sadistic killer they were so afraid of. He looks like a hunk. The Kashi was lost for words when he saw Yuzumaki Shredder unmasked. But there was something very familiar about him. Just by looking at his face. Dot but he couldn't place his finger on it. Suddenly Naruto's teammates arrived at the bridge uncloaking themselves wearing their masks. Which shocked the Kanoha squad. How the hell do they appear so quietly? Standing in view was Falcon, Artemis Sabertooth Onslaught and Nair. Falcon and Artemis stepped towards Naruto as the two were watching the Kanoha group. I take it you guys killed the rest of Gato's thugs. Naruto asked with both nodding. Yes. We sure did Naruto. Answered Falcon which made the others shocked that they also killed Gato's thugs, but Kakashi was too shocked as he had to comprehend what he just heard. This being before him is his sensei's son. Na Naruto. Gasped out Kakashi making Naruto turn to him. Ah yes. You. Dear Kakashi hot Aki. My father's student. Naruto says with the rest of the Konoha group that hears this is that Yuzumaki Shredder is the son of the Yandai Mei, the boy who's been assumed missing kidnapped by the enemy. How do you know of me? Kakashi asks wondering how did the boy know about him. My friends who raised me told me everything. They were my mother's protectors. Naruto answered with Kakashi now suddenly connecting the dots. He knew there was something suspicious about Kashina. So these beings are her protectors. He glanced at the Yajta that are around Naruto. I presume you want to capture Yuzumaki Shredder alive and bring me to Konoha. Naruto says with the Konoha group dropping their jaws, how did he know the people of Waves suddenly had looks of anger on their faces when they heard of this especially Tsunami. The Yajdas gave out inhuman growls of that of an angry lion or tiger. Which frightened the group. How? Asked Anko stunned that he knows. I eavesdropped on your conversation and heard of what you all are planning. Naruto answered with a grin. You guys are not going to capture our hero. Protested a wave villager with many others agreeing. Yeah. Yuzumaki Shredder is our hero. We refuse to allow you to take him away from us. Shouted Inari glaring at the Kanoha group. If you want to take Shredder from us you'll have to go through all of us. Yelled a worker under Tazuna with many agreeing. The Kashi and Ko didn't know what to do. How can they please the people of Wave without them turning into an angry mob? However. I do want to come to Kanoha. Naruto would say. With the people of Wave having a double take at this, as did Kakashi and his group. What? Kakashi says. I'd like to see my father and mother's home. Me and my crew will go there. I wish to see your Hokage in privacy. Naruto says with them exchanging glances at one another. You mean just like that? Hana says a little stunned. Exactly. Even if you guys tried to capture me. You all will fail in doing so. 
Not to mention you'd have to deal with my crew. They are very formidable. But I'm just as worse as they are combined together. I could kill all of you without breaking a sweat, but that would make me no better than a bad blood. I will come with you to Kanoha to see what my family's home is like then have a private meeting with your Hokage. Naruto says with everyone looking from him to the Kanoha group. He's serious even if we did try to capture him, we wouldn't last long whispered Yugao. Maybe this is better we take him to our Hokage in a civil manner. The people of Wave looked very ready to beat us to a pulp. Dot Hana chimes. With Anko now agreeing. Yeah perhaps this is better Kakashi says. Very well Naruto. Instead of capturing you. We will take you to Konoha in a more civil manner. Kakashi says. With Naruto now nodding. I'm glad we settled this without me having to kill some of you and have your heads as trophies. Naruto says. Well if they are taking you to Konoha. I'm coming with you. Tsunami suddenly says with Tezuna looking shocked that his daughter wants to go with their hero. I'm coming too. I want to be around Shredder. Inari now says. What? You both are leaving Wave to be with him. Tazuna now says with both his daughter and grandson nodding. Yes, dad. I want to get to know my savior more. Tsunami says with Artemis growling a little behind her mask. Well in that case. Falcon. Ready the ship. We are heading to Kanoha Naruto commanded with Falcon nodding and walked off to do just that. The ship. What are you talking about? Kakashi frowns. We have a vessel that could fly. We are flying to Kanoha. Naruto explains. So thought of what to call the bridge. Tsunami asked her father. Well let's go with calling it the Great Shredder Bridge. Tazuna calls out with many now agreeing to that as Tazuna turns towards Naruto. I trust that you will take good care of my daughter and grandson. He says with Naruto nodding with Haku standing besides him. You have my word that your daughter will be safe. Naruto says with Tazuna now shaking hands with Naruto. And thank you for saving my daughter and grandson twice. And for saving my village. Should the leaf village not be enough for you wave can be your home. Tazuna also says Naruto nodding. Hum Kanoha group we will take you to our ship. Falcon is already getting it ready. Naruto would say with them nodding wanting to see what ship does Naruto possess. Some time later Tsunami and Inari brought their belongings and Wetna to get on Naruto's ship. Bakashi along with the group were surprised by the ship Naruto has. Impressive isn't it? Naruto says seeing him Kakashi Team 7, Anko, Yugao who told her squad to return to the village and that she will meet up with them. Hana and her dogs also got on board with Tsunami, Inari and Haku on board as well. Suddenly the ship lifted in the air. This surprised them. This ship is so advanced. Dot how does Naruto have something like this at his disposal? And now they are on their way to Konoha. The Leaf Village now in peace and is still somewhat recovering due to the QB attack. The San de Ami Hokage who was now in his office awaiting for Team 7 to return from Wave. Days ago after H received Kakashi's message about the mysterious killer. He hopes him and the team he sent are not dead by this mysterious killer. Since no one has ever seen the killer or lived to tell the tale of seeing it face to face. He just hoped he didn't send them to their deaths. But the sigh he looked at the mountain of paperwork. The Chunin rushed in alerting the Hokage. Hokage-sama. A strange vessel landed in front of the village. Come immediately. The Chunin exclaimed as the Hokage vanished in a swirl of leaves to go to the entrance of the village. Leaf gate entrance. Many of the villagers stares wide-eyed at the ship before them. All shinobi and villagers having never seen nothing like this before. The Hokage arrived. Along with a squadron of Anbu at his side. As he glanced at the ship in awe. It was until the hatch opened as the shinobi and Anbu instantly were on guard feeling very tense. Humming out of the entrance of the ship revealed Team 7, Anko, Yugao and her Anbu, Hana and her dogs. A teenage girl, a older woman and a little boy. But what out the rest on guard was the masked figures. The one in front of the other ones wore a fox-like mask, it was then the Hokage realized that this is the mysterious killer, or rather a clan of them by the looks of it. Who are you? Are you the Uzumaki Shredder? The San de Ami asked towards Naruto who nodded and then spoke. Of course I am. I have brought your shinobi back San de Ami Hokage. I am the Uzumaki Shredder, and this is my team of hunters. I've come to speak to you in private. Naruto says in a deep disoriented demonic voice through his mask. As the Hokage frowned as he looked towards Kakashi who nodded. Very well. You may come to my office and we can talk. Hiruzen says as Shredder nodded and turned towards Onslaught, Sabretooth and Naira. You three stay here and guard the ship. Artemis and Falcon with me. Naruto says as the two stepped forward with the three nodding their heads and grunted. There are many whispers and murmuring among the crowd as many eyed these masked beings. Especially the male's eyes Artemis who was staring at her backside and chest. She would have growled at them and cracked her whip at them. The Hokage Tower. Now in the Hokage office the Hokage stares at the large group before him. Well Yuzumaki Shredder. What do you want to talk to me about? 
Ask here is in facing him along with the other two masked beings named Falcon and Artemis. Well son de ami Hokage. Since you've asked I've come here to see what my family's home was like. Naruto answered pulling the tubes from his mask with Hiruzen raising a brow. Family? What family? He says then suddenly he began putting two and two together and widened his eyes looking at Shredder. Wait you can't be Hiruzen says until Shredder took off his mask, revealing himself to be none other than Naruto Nami Kazu Uzumaki. Naruto says a shocked Hiruzen pleased that Naruto is actually here. Yes old man, Hokage. I've come home to see what my family's home is like. I've brought back your shinobi and saved wave. And if I'm going to be living here my teammates will live here including my entourage. Naruto says with the Hokage looking at him, it shocked him to the core that Naruto is the Uzumaki Shredder and is a mysterious killer. Your family? How did you know about them? Hiruzen asked out of curiosity. My friends. Who raised me told me about my father and mother. On the night of my birth my mother's bodyguard took me off of earth and took me to their planet to raise me and teach me on how to be a hunter. I lived on Yajta Prime to become a full-fledged hunter. Naruto says now telling his story to the Hokage of his life on this planet a world called Yajta Prime. In which he's never heard of before and wondered which intrigued the Hokage, that Kishina was friends with these Yajta who never told him or Minato about these unknown beings, and these unknown beings were probably the ones who helped Kishina on her missions. Well that is an interesting story, so these Yojtas feel that you should return home here, since you've become a hunter as you say. Hiruzen says. That is correct and here I am. I've come to become a Kanoha Shinobi. Naruto says. Ah. Well then you are more than welcome to become a Kanoha Shinobi Naruto. And since you've returned your father left you the Namikaze Manor. You and your team can live there. Mind telling me who's the civilians you have with you? Hiruzen asks seeing Naruto faced Tsunami. Haku and Inari. The mother is Tsunami and the boy besides her is Inari they are from Wave Village they wanted to come with me as for the teenage girl her name is Haku, who was once an accomplice of Zabuza whom I fraud in battle. Has request after I kill him, I take in Haku and look after her. She's under my protection. Naruto explains. They are welcome to stay in Kanoha Naruto. It's good seeing you again. We've looked all over for you thinking you've been stolen by your father's enemies or worse you were killed, but never thought you taken by these Yojtas that are friends with Kashina. Kakashi will show you to your father's house. Hiruzen says as Naruto nodded Kakashi. One thing Hokage-san. I'd very appreciate it if the village or anyone else to know about my true identity. Naruto requests as the Kage nodded in understanding. Very well. The rest of you. This will remain S rank. Naruto's identity is to remain a secret. Failure to comply will result in death. The Hokage ordered. As they nodded and obeyed that order. As Kakashi went to go show Naruto and his hunters along with his people to his father's house. Naruto would have to tell Falcon to park the ship elsewhere and cloak it, so no one wouldn't find it. Putting back on his mask Naruto smiled. He was truly home. And now he gets to see what other prey will he play with during his stay here. Elsewhere. That unknown location. Was an outpost base. That was likely owned by a certain snake Sanon. Then this outpost would be one of Orochimaru's many hideouts and places for him to do his cruel experiments. Since he is hellbent on trying to get immortality. So how you feeling? Asks a sound shinobi asking his friend. Good. But bored. I want a transfer to another outpost he says with a sigh. You know Orochimaru-sama wants us to stay here he says it's something very important that must be guarded here. Says another as the sound shinobi scoffs. Please tell me you are not referring to that thing. Orochimaru-sama created he says in a tense voice as the others gasped. Oh right how could we forget that creature. Orochimaru-sama created and sent it here to be locked away. Says another. Yeah if you could that she a creature. She's vicious and dangerous. I remember the first time she was brought here that night and Lord Orochimaru left us instructions to look after his monster he created. Which could have been a potential weapon to him. Makes us wonder why he imprisoned her here. He hardly comes here it's like he's forgotten about her. Says a Chunin rank sound shinobi. Beats me. But he says to be very careful she's crafty and very smart. I don't even know how she was made. Dot I mean since when have we seen Lord Orochimaru's other experiments have a uh, long tails with a blade attached to it, says a veteran sound nin. Does she have a name? Asked another. I don't know. She wasn't given one I think. Orochimaru calls her project Arc Empress, she looks terrifying like she's something from out of hell itself. Replied the veteran sound shinobi. How long it's been since she's been locked here? Asks another. Hard to say, maybe eight years. She was housed from another outpost, but she attempted to escape and was captured, then sent to another outpost to another, yet she tried to escape so Orochimaru sent her here. Says a Jonin leveled sound nin. Crazy. Yet she hasn't made any attempts of escaping here and now you think she gave up? He asks with others shrugging. 
in the prison hold. Deep down in the prison hold inside a large cell. Was a 8-7-foot-tall pale-skinned figure with long black hair and black eyes with slit pupillar eyes, colored white four tubes on its back. A very long tail with a sharp blade end. Nails sharp and colored five-digit fingers. Feet were taloned. And a long double-length tail with a sharp bladed end. This eight-foot figure was a woman of some sorts. Naked in her glory not wearing her clothing which are torn and ripped in tatters. She possesses the body of a young woman beautiful yet cold. Having double F cups her waist was slim, hips curvy and very childbearing. This woman or perhaps creature is called the Dark Empress, one of Orochimaru's forgotten experiments. How she came to be. It all started when Dragon who brought Artemis and Falcon as young-blooded Yajtas for training and hunting Xenomers, since they got bored of hunting human prey. Apparently Dragon has serpent eggs to use for hunting, and used Shinobi they captured to become hosts to breed Xenomers. After Falcon and Artemis finished their hunting test and training Dragon no longer needed the eggs anymore, so he destroyed them. However. Only one. Remained. And Orochimaru of the Sanin found the egg and took it for study. After having the egg in his possession it hatched and found itself on a nearby sound Kanoichi face raping her and was impregnated with its spawn. After it was ready to burst it killed its host with Orochimaru capturing the creature and suddenly had ideas to experiment what this creature is. And like the evil scientist he was. He took the chest buster for study and experimented it by fusing its genes with the combined DNAs of the late Makoto Ichiha, whom he heard died, then used Kamimuro's genes along with Kabuto's and his own blood. To create the perfect weapon. The rest of the genetics he added to her are classified, it soon evolved with a humanoid appearance, yet has the traits of the Xenomorph. It's kind. It was at this moment he named the creature the Dark Empress and had plotted to use her to destroy Kanoha someday. But the Dark Empress proved to be savage and too clever for her own good and has attempted to kill her own creator. She did not see him as a parental figure or as a member of the Hive, she couldn't be brought to his control, so he locked her away. Seeing that she was another failed project and experiment. The Dark Empress raised her head showing her face that slightly resembles one of Makoto Uchiha. Her lips are black opening her mouth hissing lightly. Showing her sharp teeth. Along with her inner jaw. She needed to get out of here. To escape and do what she wants to do. To create a hive and repopulate this world with a new kind of xenomorphs. She needed to escape. And she finally thought of a plan on how to escape. A little later. All right you monster it's time for lunch. Says a guard pushing a plate in a compartment of the cell door. As he waited for the creature to accept the plate. Yet there was silence. Opening the compartment window to see what is she doing. Only to not see her in the room. Widening his eyes he grabbed the key and unlocked her cell door running inside. The room is empty. How did she escape? This cell was acid-proof to keep her from using her acid-release bloodline. How? Says the guard. Little did he know was that an invisible tail was behind him and impaled him as he screamed. She tosses his body aside with her tail and landed on the ground from the ceiling, revealing that she could camouflage. Now free she runs out the door. The guards who heard screaming instantly appeared and widened their eyes in fear. She's free. Someone stop her sound the alarm. Screamed a guard who as they all tried to surround her and attack her. Yet she hissed and screeched at them with ferocity that it made them stricken in terror as she lifted her double body length tail with the blade tip dripping with acid. She sprays acid at the group of guards melting them hearing their blood curdling screams. Take this you bitch. Shouted a sound tune in with a sword and stabbed the dark empress with it through her stomach, she screeched in pain yet stood still in her resolve as she backhanded him knocking him into a few other guards. Pulling the sword out. Their eyes began to bug when they saw her stab wound instantly heal. As she gave them a chilling smile. Stop her. Stop her. Yelled the tune in as he and all the guards stood their ground as they saw her lunge at them crawling on all fours in a feral way as long blades grew from her upper wrists. Then leaped and began butchering the guards. The carnage continued for one full hour. The last guard was running. Running for his life. Behind him was the Dark Empress. Who pounced on him and killed him by impaling his skull with her inner jaw. After that she walks free. There are no survivors. She sets the place on fire and walks outside for the first time. Freedom she says mentally using her mind as she walks away from the burning outpost, along with the dead guards and prisoners she killed. But the Dark Empress. Now free from the prison that she was locked in for eight years. She remained hidden in the shadows. Stay naked as the day she was created. The Dark Empress is the first hybrid ever made. Made with the fused genes of the Xenomorph in its serpent chest buster state. Along with combining its genes with Makoto Uchiha's blood. Giving it a humanoid appearance and made look more human yet still has the traits of the Xenomorph. She bore Makoto's appearance as if Makoto never died. When she really is. You could say the Dark Empress and Makoto Ichiha share the same look as if they are twin sisters or her biological daughter. 
Mikoto's Dna wasn't the only thing fused to make the perfect hybrid. Kabuto. Orochimaru's right-hand man. He spliced Kabuto's Dna and fused it with the Dark Empress to give her a fast healing rate, since Kabuto is a fast healer. And now she inherits it. The Mimro also had his genes fused with her for her to use bone release. Then Orochimaru spliced his own genes into his creation, hoping she would inherit his intelligence and become the most cunning. Which would make Orochimaru her father. But she doesn't see the man as her father. Just a stranger. While she did appreciate in learning from him. She learned all she could from the snake Sanon. And since he proved his usefulness to her she decided to kill him in his sleep. Yet failed when Kabuto walked in and caught her in the act which alerted Orochimaru, who looked bewildered that his own creation tried to kill him. Suddenly the snake Sanon fought his creation who proved too savage for him. Even Kabuto had trouble fighting her. It took Orochimaru, Kabuto, Kamimro, the Sound 4 and Guren to defeat her and lock her away. Neither of them couldn't best her unscathed. Orochimaru had half his face melted from her acid release and lost an arm and a leg in the process. Kabuto lost his left ear from her using her inner jaw, then had four ribs cracked. Kamimro had acid burns on his skin when he stabbed her and cut into her with his bone blade. The sound four were beaten to a pulp, and Gurin only received claw marks on her cheek. After that brutal fight the Dark Empress was sent away and locked up. She was too savage to be controlled. Her other genetics. She can camouflage to be stealthy. Orochimaru used the genes of a chameleon to grant her the ability to camouflage. The rest are still classified or that she hasn't just used them yet. Her bloodline would be acid release. In which she awakened at a young age. Now free she now has a goal. A goal she wishes to accomplish. Like all Xenomers. She wants to create a hive. With her as its queen or empress. She will find a place that can become her hive. She has to fulfill her purpose. And these humans all of them will become breeding stock. She does possess the body of a beautiful young woman, her instincts told her that she can asexually give birth to Xenormaf eggs. Without the need of a male. She could self-reproduce. Yes. She will do that when she finds a proper place that could be hive material for her. Now she's hungry food first, then find a place to stay and build her hive. She would have a taste for animals but honestly likes human flesh. Since one time when she was imprisoned and tried to put her in a new cell, she grabbed the first guard that tried to subdue her and pulled him into her cell and ate him alive, tearing him pieces to pieces. So yeah. She eats humans too. Later on at night. It was dark out. Perfect. She loved the night. As she crept into the bushes staring straight ahead. Seeing a farm of some sort seeing a wooden fence. She sees a cow in the meadow. Its head perked up and looked at her direction in fear. So did several other cows. She walked out the bushes and hissed animalistic as she lunged at the fence tearing it down, which made the cows moo in fear and tried to run. But the Dark Empress caught one adult cow and sank her inner jaw through its neck, then pinned it down, tearing into its flesh and devouring its warm blood. After eating her first cow, she goes after another and devoured it along with killing a third one. Loud mooing could be heard. The farmer along with his wife and their pet dog came out here to investigate on what's happening to their livestock. Once they made it their eyes widened seeing the carnage before them. The wife gasped in horror. Oh my kami. Dot what did this? The wife asked her husband who held a crossbow. Who looked taken back that four of his cows had died and the rest ran away in fright. This ain't no wolf that did this and it sure as hell ain't no bear he says very tensed as his dog perked its head up looking at the bushes as it suddenly barked. What's wrong boy? You sent something. The farmer asked his dog who immediately went into the bushes. Rick. No. The farmer called out hearing the dog growling. At back here. Rick. He called. Suddenly the farmer and his wife heard the dog yelp in pain, along with a loud hissing sound. Both widened their eyes. Let's go back to the house real slow the farmer says now shaking in fear holding his crossbow. They heard the hissing get louder. As they both ran to the house and locked the doors. Oh my kami what is that? His wife asked. I don't know I didn't even see it he replied he took a deep breath. Feeling a cold sweat. They heard a chilling hiss like noise as their eyes moved to the window and saw eight foot silhouette walking by the window. Which made them gasp in shock along with seeing its long tail. The two crouched down in silence hoping whatever it was didn't hear them. Everything was too quiet. Too quiet. They didn't hear the hissing. You think it's gone? The wife asked in a whisper, he was going to answer until he heard noise outside the front door. It's at the front door. Dottie says aiming his crossbow at the door. He moves closer to the door still with the crossbow in hand as his wife stayed behind. Trying to be brave yet scared out of his mind of what was at his front door as he opened it quickly and aimed his crossbow only to see nothing. Where did it go? He went outside to see where did the creature go. 
He heard low hissing and whipped around with his crossbow, but it was all too late, as the Dark Empress impaled the farmer through his head with her tail killing him. Honey where are you? She says heading out the door only to widen her eyes and seeing the Dark Empress at her doorstep. The wife screamed until she was pounced on by Dark Empress who tore her apart and then consumed her. After devouring her last meal she sleeps in the human bed until morning. Looking at the clothes the wife had. The Dark Empress suddenly had an idea. Maybe she could try blending in with these humans. She took a bath first since she smells of blood and death. As she developed her hand jutsu to look more human to hide her actual appearance. She looked a lot like Makoto as she took the wife's clothes putting on a white dress and bra that hugged her figure. She left the farm she had stayed for the night and went on her face to continue her search for a suitable place that could become her hive. But first she must arm herself. To look like a Kinoichi she decided to go to Land of Iron. Change her appearance to blend in with the humans. Have an identity and name instead of the Dark Empress. The Dark Empress walks free and pretty soon in the future she will fight her kind's natural enemies that has hunted them. She will get rid of all threats that will be a threat to her future hive that she is trying to make. With Jiraiya. The Toad Sage suddenly got a message from his sensei about Naruto's return. As the old pervert looked relieved and decided to make a beeline for Konoha to see what his godson looks like along with these masked beings. Who are somewhat responsible for raising Naruto. Namikaze Estate. True enough Kakashi did lead Naruto and his party to his father's house. Which indeed was big enough for anyone to live in. Naruto himself looked up so this is his parents' home. And they both left it for him. Well here you are Naruto. Welcome home. Kakashi says giving Naruto the key to his father's house as Naruto accepts it. Thank you Kakashi. Naruto says in a deep voice wearing his mask. Since he wants to keep his identity a secret. As the man nodded and left in a swirl of leaves with Naruto and Ko now entering the house and see what's all here and to explore since they will be staying here. Hokage Tower. Who were those masked beings here is in? Ask a stoic cold voice that belonged to a bandaged old man walking with a cane. Besides him are two other figures both of them look just as old as the Sande Ami and the bandaged old man. Hiruzen glanced at all three of his teammates with a frown. Those masked beings are the mysterious killers. They brought back our shinobi alive. Hiruzen answered with the three looking horrified and flinched as they heard rumors about the mysterious killer who are never seen or that no shinobi has ever lived to tell the tale of seeing the killer. But had no idea that it was more than one. Which they could assume it was a clan of them. And they are here. Questioned the elderly woman making hairs and turned to her. Yes. Kaharu. I assure you they won't bring no harm to anyone here. Hiruzen says. Hiruzen have you lost it, you are letting those those killers stay here in our village. Shouted old man named Hamura. And what makes you think they should be trusted? Danzo asked keeling a cold look on the Hokage. Because. They will be working for us. Hiruzen says having planned on making a proposition with Naruto and his group to be mercenaries in the shadows. I demand Anbu to be keeping an eye on them. Who knows what they could be plotting. You could possibly endanger the whole village for allowing a group of rogue mysterious killers come in our village and will doom us all. Hamura says with both his other teammates nodding in agreement. No. Hiruzen replied with all three of them look taken back by this. No. What do you mean no? They are a threat. Yudkaharu says, but Hiruzen raised light killer intent. Kaharu. My order is absolute. I trust them not to kill any of our shinobi, Hiruzen says in a stern strict voice that shows why he is the Hokage. I'm not fully convinced. Danzo says with annoyance that his former teammate is not willing to have any Anbu to keep watch on them. Now deciding should he have his root Anbu in the shadows to watch them. Doesn't matter if you are not convinced. Please don't make them our enemies. It would be better for them to be our allies. Hiruzen would say as all three of his teammates scoffed. We'll hold this against you Hiruzen. Because we don't trust them. You are foolish in doing this. What if you endanger the village by letting them stay here? And will secretly kill us? Kaharu says in a displeased tone of voice as he narrowed his eyes at her. That is if you don't provoke them. Here is encountered as all three of them scowled and turned to walk away since they couldn't win this argument. He watched them leave a sigh on his face. He couldn't risk to tell them who is Uzumaki Shredder's identity. Dottie knows the clan heads will want to know about the hunters that are staying here. He will tell them tomorrow. He hopes they don't do something to provoke Naruto and his allies. They would have to be a time where Naruto's identity will be revealed someday. And he hopes it doesn't come to that. Knowing the populace of Konoha will not accept Naruto here due to him holding the QB in him. Later that night. Tsunami had cooked dinner for Haku, her son, Naruto, and his fellow hunters she had went out earlier in the evening to get groceries, as she was escorted by Sabretooth, who was cloaked and watching her. Naruto was unmasked looking at pictures of his parents. Seeing his father and mother smiling happily. Along with seeing them in another picture. 
A pregnant Kashina smiling with Minato besides her also smiling. Naruto smiled wondering what his life would be like if they were still alive. All his life he was raised on Yojita Prime. Being trained to become a hunter and now he has successfully became a marked hunter by slaying his first serpent and helped slay the queen with Scar and Lex. He wondered how those two are doing on Yojita Prime. He suddenly heard a growl as he looked at the doorway and noticed Falcon standing there. What is the matter Falcon? Naruto asks his mentor friend. Put on your mask. We are being watched. Falcon says with Naruto now glaring and puts on his mask. As Naruto looked out the window with Falcon besides him. From a far away distance were five Anbu in blank masks. Naruto growled inhumanly. Is the Hokage breaking our agreement? Does he not trust my word? Naruto snarled. Those Anbu aren't loyal to the Hokage, but rather the one called Danzo. Falcon says with a growl. As Naruto remembered Dragon telling him about the man named Danzo who tried to go after his mother on the night of his birth. No did get Artemis and Sabretooth. We are going to hunt the one named Danzo and make him confess his crime on attempting to kidnap my mother on the night of my birth, and after that he dies. Naruto growled with Falcon nodding and cloaked to go get Artemis and Sabretooth. Naruto himself grabbed whatever weapon he needed necessary and cloaked himself. With the Root Squad. Where did they go? They disappeared. Ask a Root Foot Soldier. You think they suspect us? Ask another Root Operative. I am unsure admitted the captain until he saw three red dots pointed at him, then saw it going up to his forehead. The Thurfu the captain says, but suddenly a blue blast blown his whole head off. Which made the other four root shinobi back away in fear and shock as they heard growling. The next root Anbu was shot by three arrows. Courtesy of Artemis. The other was impaled from behind by a jagged dagger. The last root Anbu started running away in fear heading back to his base. Four cloaked figures made themselves known. After him. He will lead us to Danzo. Naruto says as he and his hunters cloaked themselves and pursued after the root nin. Root HQ. What? Your team and captain were decimated, Danzo questioned looking down at his root operative who nodded. Yes, Danzo-sama. I nearly made it out alive. Says the root operative. Suddenly they heard noise and yelling as the two widened their eyes, Danzo narrowed his eye at his soldier. You fool. You brought them to us. Danzo yelled in anger. With Naruto. Naruto, Artemis, Falcon, and Sabretooth are fighting their way through Root Anbu. Artemis fired arrow after arrow at every Root Anbu charging their way. Aiming for their chest, heads, and aimed for their vital areas. As she put away her bow and pulled out her whip and started cracking it as she lashed her whip at several Root men. Falcon tossed a smart disc beheading six Root Anbu. As he pulled out his double wrist blades and started going in a berserk like a fury slicing through them all. Cutting them to pieces. Beheading them. Slitting their throats as he was covered in their blood. One root Anbu charged at Falcon with two kunais but didn't last long, because Falcon turned on his plasma canister and blew a big hole in the root soldier. Sabretooth growled in primal fury like a lion, as he was against seven root Anbu, as he was armed with his dual jagged daggers and began butchering them with his daggers. Not giving neither of them a chance to land a hit on him. Naruto was savage in his fight against the Anbu. He tossed two shurikens that horrifically disemboweled multiple root anbu as he brought out his plasma rod that was made with a xenomorph tail as it heated up and blew pure plasma. As he went to work on all of them bisecting them from the waist down. Cutting off their limbs. Piercing through them with the hot burning plasma melting their insides. They were also split into two like a peach from the plasma rod whip, then beheaded. As their screams echoed. The root anbu hardly could put up a fight against Naruto and the hunters. You yelled a root captain as he charged at Naruto, but Artemis saw this and also charged with her wrist claws out and impaled the captain through his back and ripped out his spine in a gory way. We can't let Danzo get away. I'm going after him. Naruto says as the others nodded as they kept on their carnage to kill the other root Anbu. But Danzo. Who was running, trying to make his escape as he was escorted by 20 root Anbu. In the hallway Naruto let out a guttural roar that would make anyone shit themselves. Danzo and his men turned around and spotted Naruto. So you're Danzo you have a lot to answer for. Naruto growled. Stay away from me. Root kill him. Danzo commanded so that he can make his escape. His root operatives would cover for him. As he would proceed to run for his life. You won't escape from me Danzo. Naruto roared pulling out two plasma canister pistols and activated his shoulder plasma canister and opened fire blowing holes through the root Anbu and blowing their whole heads off in the process. None of the root Anbu stood a chance and are dead. Naruto ran after Danzo and raised his hand and shot a long chain with a spear-like blade which impacted through Danzo's back as the old man grunted in pain. Bet over here. Naruto's voice boomed and yanked his harpoon pulling Danzo to him as he grabbed the old man and started punching his face in, with the old man yelling being hit in the face. 
Then Naruto grabbed his head and banged the old cripple's face into the wall very hard for about four times, and then punches him in the jaw, knocking out several teeth from his mouth. Anzo for his part coughed and spit up blood and groaned in pain who is this creature? I'm not going to kill you. I'm taking you to the Hokage. Naruto says as he punched Anzo one last time in the face knocking him out and would drag him. Land of Iron. It was the same night. As the Dark Empress now in her human disguise was walking back to her hotel room that she currently stays at since her arrival. Before her arrival to Land of Iron on her way here she's killed bandits who tried to assault her and kill her, even tried to mug her. She gave them no mercy when she turned savage and turned into her true look, which frightened the thugs and bandits who cornered her. After killing them she took whatever money they have stolen from their victims and used to buy herself some clothes and to be able to stay at a hotel. After doing the deed she ate their food and ate them in the process. Now here in the land of iron she came here to see would this place be suitable for her to create a hive. Walking down the street wearing a long sleeve dark shirt, wearing black tight pants and black sandals. While holding a purse she recently stolen from a woman and broke the woman's neck who tried to take her purse back from the dark empress. She noticed a stray dog bark at her, as her dark eyes turned to the dog that was barking at her, until she hissed at it that it made the dog whimper and scamper off in fear, as it could tell she was not human but something else. She even thought of a name to call herself. Izanami. That is her new name. Izanami instead of Dark Empress. She now walks in an alleyway. A mugger spotted her. Dottie snuck up behind her and held a knife to her throat. MMM you look beautiful. Let's see what you got in the purse the mugger says with greed and looking at Izanami in lust. Izanami for her part silently grew sharp bones from her back and launched them through the mugger who took in a gasp of pain as he was impaled by multiple sharp bone-like projectiles from her back. Blood leaked from his mouth as he slumped against a garbage can. Looking up at Izanami who looked at him with a cold expression as the life had left his eyes and body. She would continue to walk off after killing her recent victim. Taking a shortcut to her hotel. Then in the morning she would check out some stores to buy more clothes and maybe a weapon for herself to look more kanoichi. Borders of Iron Country. Geez what the hell did all this to these bastards? Says a samurai looking at the many mutilated corpses of the bandits. The traveler reported the side and a group of samurai came here to investigate. The body count was 15 bandits murdered. Disemboweled, mutilated, torn apart, halfway eaten. Claw marks. What you think of this captain? This one's face has been melted off. What you think done this? Ask a samurai looking at the captain who looked at the dead body of the lead bandit whose face had been melted off. Like Ami I don't know what could have done something so gruesome to these bandits might report this to add wild animal that did this. The captain says. But sir what if it wasn't an animal that did this? Animals I know that are ruthless are wolves, bears, tigers, and lions, and it can't be a man that did this. Says the samurai with the captain looking at him. Well what do you think that did this if it wasn't any of those animals you mentioned, the captain asked with skepticism in his voice. I don't know maybe an unidentified creature we have never seen before. What kind of creature can melt off a man's face? The samurai mused looking at the dead bandit leader with its face melted off. You think it's a demon that did this? Ask another samurai with the rest turning to him. Get over yourself. That's the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. Demons are just make-believe to scare off bad children. Says another samurai in a gruff voice. You may never know. Replied the samurai. Enough men, let's grab the bodies and get rid of them. I'll take this report to our superiors in Land of Iron. That an unknown mysterious creature is out somewhere says the captain with the rest nodding. The Noha Council Chamber. Pirazin was not pleased by this turn of events. Dottie specifically told his teammates to not provoke their new allies, and only one of them provoked. Danzo. Naruto had came to him in his office and told him about what Danzo attempted to do which angered the old Kage, because he had warned Danzo, yet the old fool refused to heed his warning. Naruto wants Danzo put on trial to confess his crimes, along with a crime he did 12 years ago. Hiruzen wondered what did Danzo do 12 years ago. Naruto told him to wait until the trial was called and he wanted it now. Even though it was 1.35 in the morning Hiruzen did as Naruto requested by calling all clan heads and his other teammates to come to this meeting this instant. Danzo was now in the middle of the council room looking at all the councillors in the room. With Yuzumaki Shredder at his side with Falcon and Artemis beside him. The clan heads present. Fuga, Nara, Yamanaka, Inuzuka, Akimchi, and Abraham. Clans are here. What did I tell you Danzo? I told you to not provoke them. And that's not all but you had Root. Spy on our new guests. Last I checked I ordered you to disband Root. Hiruzen says angrily with a glare directed at his ex-teammate, who also glared at him too, with his face all bruised up from Yuzumaki Shredder, slamming his face in a wall, and his mouth in pain, because he lost several teeth and jaw was in pain from Shredder punching him in the face. 
They are a threat. Why can't you see that Hiruzen? Danzo sneered with Hiruzen scowling at him. Maybe because I am getting to know them unlike you. You deliberately disobeyed two orders one. Disband Root. Yet it turns out you had Root active under my nose and did illegal crimes here in this village. Getting away with it. Hiruzen says now turning to Kaharu and Hamura who sweated knowing they are in trouble too for supporting Danzo and help cover up his illegal activities. Both elders were sweating and Hiruzen gave them a look that said. I will deal with you two later as his eyes went back on Danzo. 2. You are trying to provoke our new guests here and start trouble. When I specifically said not to provoke them. Tell me Danzo what do you have to say for yourself. Hiruzen questioned with the old cripple still glaring. I was doing it for the good of Konoha. I am a patriot. We both know these mask killers aren't to be trusted. I had to keep an eye on them to ensure they are not plotting on us Danzo shot back with Falcon and Artemis growing at him making the council on edge after hearing those growls. See, they are monsters. I bet they are not even human under that mask. Danzo shouts until Yuzumaki Shredder backhands him hard with the sound echoing in the room. Silence whelp. You should be more concerned about Judgment Day once I show the crime you have committed 12 years ago. Yuzumaki Shredder says with everyone raising brows and look taken back. Danzo committed a crime 12 years ago. And you are a witness of it? Asked Inoichi with Shredder turning to him. No. My mentors here are the witnesses. Show them the truth. Yuzumaki Shredder commanded with both of them nodding as Falcon activated his wrist computer, bringing up an image on the wall of the council room as they saw Kashina Yuzumaki being carried by something invisible. It was then she was surrounded by Root Anbu which surprised everyone in the room. Kashina Yuzumaki. Surrender and come with us quietly. Said the Root Captain with Kashina narrowing her eyes and scowling. So it seems that old fart Danzo. Still has Root active behind Hiruzen and Minato. She says with anger. Come with us now. Your weak resistance is futile. The captain says while she laughed. I'm not going anywhere. You all are about to die. She says smiling. Suddenly they saw the root Anbu killed by something invisible, once they were killed the clip showed Dragon, Falcon and Artemis. Here is in who scowled along with everyone else except the civilian council and Hamura and Kaharu. So you not only had root active during the time Minato was Hokage, but sent your root to try and kidnap Kashina Yuzumaki. Here is in snarled now livid by this information. She was hiding something. I had to do what needed to be done. Danzo snarled. You have committed treason for the last time. Yuzumaki Shredder he is yours to do with as you please. His status as counselor is terminated. The Sande Ami says with Hamura and Kaharu gasping in horror that Hiruzen is giving him to these killers. Yuzumaki Shredder grinned behind his mask. With pleasure. Shredder says unsheathing his katana with Danzo looking up at him in hatred. Damn you to hell. Shouted Danzo and like that he was swiftly beheaded. No one showed no remorse for Danzo. Konoha, next day. Everything had cooled down after Danzo's whole fiasco with disobeying Hiruzen and committing several violations and crimes behind his back. The conniving Warhick met his end at the hands of Yuzumaki Shredder, along with the other two masked hunters. Hiruzen had told the council that Yuzumaki Shredder and his hunters will be working for them as assassins in secret. And declared it as S rank. To keep the secret. As for Kaharu and Hamura, they were arrested and sent to Ibiki to be interrogated, while Hiruzen will decide their fate, yet their council status as elders have been terminated. As for the root operatives, well remnants of them here in the village are being reconditioned. Since Shredder showed the Hokage Danzo's base that was underneath Konoha. The Hokage have the whole base shut down and relayed a command to any root Anbu outside of the village and there in other villages and countries to be returned immediately for reconditioning, since Danzo is no longer their leader anymore and they are to serve the Hokage now. Like they should have from the start. Hiruzen saw all kinds of documents and many treasonous things Danzo has done behind his back. Hokage Tower. Well sensei. I removed the seals from every root Anbu's tongue. Knew it was gonna be a matter of time until that Warhick was going to screw up says Jiraiya looking at his sensei who was holding his smoke pipe. Thanks again for your help Jiraiya. The Hokage says. Jiraiya had arrived when the sun came up. As he was immediately called to his sensei to come help unseal the seal on the root Anbu's tongues. Since Jiraiya is the only seal's master left to fix this problem. So where is he? I was told he was here. Jiraiya asked since his sensei gave him the message about Naruto being here, along with those who have raised him. He is with his fellow hunters. Hunting in the forest of death. Nico. The Hokage replied. Yes, Hokage-sama. She appeared. Would you please bring Naruto here? Tell him there is someone who wants to meet him. Here is an answer as she nodded and left. He's in the forest of death hunting there. What the hell is he doing in there? And fellow hunters. What's going on? Jiraiya asked confused to why his godson in the forest of death. Why not ask him yourself when he comes? 
Hirazin replied. Land of iron. In the daytime Izanami is blending in with the humans. Walking by them. Paying them no mind. She is on her way to a weapons shop. Looking up with her black eyes spots a weapon shop and walks inside it. Weapon shop. I'd like 60 shuriken, Izanami says in a cold voice. Just got more of those in today. Says the store clerk as he gives her a box of shuriken. Takra suppressant cuffs. I want four. She requests as he hands her the same cuffs. I want the triple bladed claw. She points to the weapon. Oh this. This is brand new just got it in. It's called a chakra enhanced triple bladed claw perfect for close combat. The clerk says handing her the weapon as she observes it. All you have to do is coat the weapon in chakra. He adds seeing her test it out. Anything else? He asks her. I want a kusanagi sword. Izanami wants on her list in her arsenal of weapons. So far she has smoke bombs. Senbon, Fuma Shuriken, 60 Shuriken, the triple bladed claw. Just what you see miss. He chuckled as her eyes moved to two chain sickles. I want those double kusirigamas. She says seeing the clerk take them off the shelf. Well here goes your weapons miss. Any of these are good for combat and assassinations. So which will it be? He asks her seeing her hold both kusirigamas. All she replied. There will be a waiting period on some of the weapons you want, the shuriken and senbin you can take, but you will have to sign these forms. The clerk says until Izanami reached into her purse and pulled out a hefty bag of money she had taken from bandits. Which caught the store owner's attention. On second thought I'll fill these out. He says now accepting the money and signing the forms. So typical these humans are they will do anything for money thought Izanami. Since money can turn a blind eye. All done. A pleasure doing business with you, he says while she gave him a cold smile. As she sealed all her weapons in a scroll and walked out the store. Having left the store. She returns to her hotel to plan her moves and motives of building her hive. And then she will search for her father Orochimaru and kill him. Including those in the Sound Village. Once she kills her father she will take over Sound Village and turn it into her primary hive. Then will amass a hive strong enough and massive enough to conquer the elemental nations, repopulating it with her kind. She will masquerade as a human for some time. She's already adapted to their emotions and interactions. Using them to blend in with the humans. After all. Who could stop her from doing what her instincts wants her to do? Eat more to evil as a queen and form her hive. Back in Kanoha. Humming in the Hokage office is Yuzumaki Shredder with Yugao besides him. You wanted to see me Hokage? Naruto asks. Yes. Naruto there is someone I'd like you to meet. Here is an answered as he turned towards Jiraiya nodding towards him. Jiraiya was stunned when he looked at his godson. Six foot tall, seeing him armored with weapons masked. Dot then they noticed his hair color is red. The last time he saw Naruto was that his hair was blonde color like his father's. Naruto for his part turns to Jiraiya facing him. Hi Naruto greeted Jiraiya. Who are you? Naruto asked. My name is Jiraiya your father's sensei and I'm also your godfather. Jiraiya answered with Naruto tilting his head, then looked towards the San Ami who nodded. Godfather? And you are my father's sensei you don't look much. Dot but how do you do Naruto replied. Well uh, how you been? Who's been looking after you? The toad sage asked. My mother's friends. Dragon, Artemis and Falcon. Naruto answered as he began telling Jiraiya his story of how he was raised by the Yajda. Who are what you called otherworldly beings and are hunters who hunt for sport. Jiraiya was taking in the story his godson was telling him as slow as he could so that he can understand. So let me get this straight Kashina let these Yajdas take you off the earth and raised you to be like them. A killer. Jiraiya asked hoping he understood correctly. Yes is that a problem? Naruto asked frowning behind his mask. Jiraiya was going to answer until the Hokage's intercom pinged. Yes. Here is an answered. Oh. Send her in. He says as he turned to the two in the room. Sorry to cut in on this, but we have company coming in. Hiruzen says as suddenly the office doors opened revealing a beautiful auburn-haired woman with green eyes. Suddenly Jiraiya blushed with a perverted look on his face when he saw the woman enter. Naruto for his part also eyed the woman seeing she does look beautiful. I hope I wasn't interrupting. The woman asked looking at the Hokage. Oh no, of course not. Gentlemen this is Mei Terumi. The leader of the rebels in Kiri. Hiruzen spoke introducing her to Jiraiya and Naruto. Hello. Nice meeting you. I'm here for help. To fight the war in Kiri against the fourth Mizukage Yagura. Mei spoke looking at the Hokage. So this part ends here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, so quickly like this video for second part of this series. And comment down below your thoughts about this series. And now it's time for me to go, bye.